Welcome to Moving Beyond, where we delve into the transformative power of exercise in the realm of cancer care. Have you ever wondered how movement can become a source of healing, strength, and hope during the challenging journey of cancer? Today, we're embarking on a journey of inspiration and resilience I'm your life doula, and in this episode, we explore stories that go beyond the traditional narrative, stories of individuals who've harnessed the healing potential of exercise in their fight against cancer. Get ready to discover a perspective that goes beyond the diagnosis and embraces the profound impact of movement in the path to wellness. In this episode, we'll hear first-hand account of a cancer survivor who has not just battled the physical challenges of her diagnosis, but has actively integrated exercise into her healing journey. We'll explore how movement has become a catalyst for mental and emotional well-being, enhancing the overall quality of life during and after treatment. From tailored exercise routines to mindful practices, our guest shares her insights, triumphs, and the remarkable ways in which embracing physical activity has shaped her experience with cancer. So whether you're facing a cancer diagnosis yourself, supporting a loved one, or simply seeking inspiration, on the potential of the human spirit. Moving Beyond invites you to join this conversation. Together, let's uncover the stories of those who have moved beyond the conventional, finding strength, joy, and hope through the simple act of harnessing the power of movement in the face of adversity. Get ready to be inspired, uplifted, and motivated to explore the healing possibilities that lie within the transformative world of exercise in cancer care. I'm very excited to be able to introduce our guest today and be able to say... She is my movement and strength coach. Wow. I have never had a movement coach. So you see, it's never too late to start a new healthy habit. So let's all welcome a dear friend, the founder of Move Beyond Cancer and co-cancer thriver and my movement coach. <laughs> April Pereras. Hi, April. Hello, Charity. Thank you so much for having me here at the Life Doula Podcast. Eh, very excited. Naisip ko tuloy meron pala kami session bukas. Yun. <laughs> April, could you share with our audience your personal cancer journey, including the various treatments, um, therapies you underwent, and how all these experiences inspired your transition from becoming a cancer driver to a cancer exercise specialist. Okay, Cha. So it all began in October 2021 when I just felt a mongo-sized lump on my right breast. And it already alarmed me that it's something that is not normal for me. So after waiting for my cycle to finish and after getting some... Um, requests from my doctors. I was able to get a mammogram early December, and guess what? The result was a normal finding. Normal? Normal, but it also mentioned that I had dense breasts. So I was able to go on with the holidays thinking that I was okay, but the lump was still there. So January of 2022, I took action and got an ultrasound. And that was where it all began because that ultrasound, they found out that it didn't look normal. Okay. They already ordered that day so many tests 
and made me come back the next day for more tests. <laughs> and it was so overwhelming uh -huh. to even think that something might be malignant for me. Um, and fast forward, I underwent a lumpectomy surgery uh -huh. in April. And that was when they finally diagnosed that I had invasive lobular carcinoma. So I had breast cancer. And it didn't even became clear to us just yet what uh, treatment I would be going through from that surgery because the results showed that the margins were positive. And it was very hard for me to accept that I will have another surgery after that just because it wasn't done. There was still more cancer inside. So in May 2022, I had to go through a second surgery. It's another lumpectomy to clear out the margins. And it was also uh, when they got the sentinel lymph node to check if it has spread. Thankfully, the, the lymph nodes were negative, but they found more cancer. It has actually invaded the breast tissues of my right breast. So with that, they already suggested that I get a mastectomy so it was so so hard can you imagine having a third surgery so at that time i was given ample period to decide should i go through a single mastectomy or should i go through a double mastectomy right a bilateral mastectomy and i prayed for it i really had to think hard about it and i finally decided Let's take them both out because I just don't want to take care of another breast that could be at risk for breast cancer again. I just needed that peace of mind. So in July of 2022, wow. right, I had to go through that bilateral mastectomy with direct to implant reconstruction. It was a smooth surgery and I am very happy that I was well taken care of. And um, that finally gave the sort, of this, uh, the sort of word from my doctors that it is done. We got all the cancer out. There was no spread. And you are going to the next step of treatment. Wow. So there. So. After three surgeries. I know. It was so hard. Um, I could see your face and, you know... I, I'm up close and you're relating it like it happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. I, I, this is something that's really common to us who went through the journey. Um, trauma is real. Mm -hmm. uh, in my case, I had one big swoop of mastectomy. You had to undergo three. Yeah. So that, that told me it's really you know, just unimaginable. April, could you delve into the specifics of therapies you underwent during your cancer treatment and how, more importantly, how incorporating exercise played a role in supporting you? And I know that more than anything, what you dreaded the most was not being able to exercise. Rabe, no? yeah. Not being able to exercise. I think there's, I can count in my five fingers how many of my clients um, was sad even more that they couldn't do exercise. Right. <laughs> April was one of them. You know, I've been active since 2018. Um, I was breastfeeding at the time when I decided I should go back to working out. And that was 2018 when I started strength training. So I've already had those years under my belt, being active and being physically fit. So with this diagnosis of cancer, I thought that this diagnosis will not stop me from moving. And I did not limit myself to just thinking that these surgeries will be the end of my fitness. So with all those surgeries that I've been through, I actually prepared my body. Before surgery, I would do workouts to strengthen my upper body. After surgery, I would do workouts wow. to recover, you know? And um, 
it went on through all three surgeries. It's as if it was a cycle that I was used to already. And I was like, okay, here goes another surgery. Time to prepare again. Time to bring out all my dumbbells again, you know. And after the surgery, all right, I will have to do my stretching again. I will have to do walking again. And those really helped me go through, not just physically, but also mentally. Yeah. It gave me a sense of control. It gave me more mental clarity and something to look forward to that, you know, I can be better and I can be stronger. So at the time after I got the mastectomy done, I was given a few months to prepare for my treatment. And the only treatment that I will be going through was 22 rounds of radiation. And that would be every day, Monday to Friday, oh. right? You know that. Monday to Friday, you will be sitting or lying down in that radiation machine and you only have the weekends of rest. So prior to that, oh, I went all out with all the exercises that I would need for my body to prepare. I also prepared my nourishment, the food that I will be eating. I also enrolled in the gym just so I would get a cardio exercise on a daily basis to prepare. So yeah, um, it was really a very uh, hard journey, but with exercise in mind and how it, I knew that it could help me in all aspects of my, of my well-being, it gave me a lot of motiva motivation. It's amazing how holistic your approach has been, considering the diverse treatment modalities, you know, radiation lasts only for 10-15 minutes, but the actual preparation and the fact that you're doing it every day is really, really strenuous. Um, but it's amazing how physical activity contributed to your overall well-being and mental health. And you and I were already engaged in terms of uh, my coaching services, but it was not very hard for me to shift you when, when you have moments of uh, distress or sp despair because I think of your physical activity. Um, what other things um, did you have to do to keep your emotional and mental well-being at that level where you're really in a fighting stance for cancer? Well, of course, talking to you was one of them. It was really one of the biggest um, things that helped me was to let it out yeah. with the right person who can truly listen and understand. Another one was I had to spend time with my friends and my family and to really be open about what I was going through. Mm -hmm. um, the fact that I was telling my story over and over to different kinds of people with social media as well, how I shared my story, that was a form of therapy for me. Yes, I think so. It was so helpful that I not only was able to help people who are going through it, but also I met so many wonderful warriors who are with me in the battle. And of course, the biggest one would be exercise, definitely. It has become my anchor to, uh, throughout my journey. And it was really the one that kept me sane. <laughs> As I would say, yeah, it kept me sane. Yeah, I, I would always see April Dawn in, on her, um, wearing her exercise outfit. Um, yeah. And I think there were only a couple of weeks when she was out of it because she was recovering from mastectomy. April is a cancer survivor who underwent various treatment approaches and especially surgical treatment. What motivated you to focus on the intersection of exercise of cancer care in your professional mm -hmm. journey? You know what, Cha? My motivation really stemmed from the desire to bridge this gap that I felt in my own journey. At that time, I felt that I was so helpless. I didn't know where to find the support yeah. or the right tools that could help me in my journey. I ended up researching all over the internet to find groups, to find people, to find what is the right movement to do, even though I've already had the background, even though if I'm already a nurse, you know, it's still something that is not actually there. 
that is also the reason why I wanted to do this. I certified myself as a cancer exercise specialist so I can offer that kind of guidance and support to others navigating the complexities of cancer treatment so that I will be showing my fellow cancer warriors that exercise is very possible and very beneficial. I just want to really um, add to that and say, this is the very reason why we created the Heal Strong program because a lot of cancer survivors ask the question after the cancer treatment, yeah. what now? Beyond the surveillance mm -hmm. test, in between that, what do we yes. do? Yes, there's nothing. What do I eat? Mm -hmm. What type of movement should I do? What can I do? What can I not do? Um, anxiety will always be around. Mm -hmm. How can I support myself? So April and I are part of the group that created the program for cancer survivor. It's called Heal Strong. It's an aftercare cancer program, holistic, because it involves nutrition. Mm -hmm. it's in, it involves body movement, and April is our resident um, cancer exercise specialist. And emotional and mental well-being, which is still around our space yes. as cancer survivors. You know the saying, April, cancer changes us, right? We are never the same after cancer. It's clear that your journey has been very transformative. Can you highlight exercises or fitness routines that were particularly helpful in mitigating side effects or aiding recovery during and after specific therapies? I, I, I know this because I'm doing it with you, but what are the simple exercises? Let's say, for example, a breast cancer survivor who underwent mastectomy can do, even from the comforts of their home. Right. So I would tell this to my clients. There are three things you can do. There's aerobic exercise or the cardio workouts, such as walking, jogging if you can, you know, simple Dancing. Things, dancing, yes, even gardening or doing house chores. Um, there is stretching, that's number two. And there is strength training. So the two, the stretching and the strength training would require someone who is knowledgeable to assist you in what are the right movements yeah. that you will do safely to help you recover and reclaim those movements. Sure. So yes. I'm sure you have encountered this. Um, so let's bust the myths around physical activity during cancer treatment because I kind of use this as a crutch for not, <laughs> for not moving during uh, the time that uh, I was undergoing treatment. So let's do a little, not a game, but can I say, for example, tell you the myth and you tell me what the reality is? Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, myth number one, physical activity is too strenuous and should be avoided during cancer treatment and recovery, that's me. Oh, I hear that a lot. And that is also used as an excuse by a lot of cancer patients, you know, and not even the cancer patients, even those who have undergone surgery, you know, in general. People are afraid to move after they have been through something so hard, such as a surgery or an intense kind of treatment. But then you know many cancer patients and survivors can actually benefit from a moderate physical activity. Studies have shown that exercise can help reduce cancer-related fatigue. Mm -hmm. You can improve your mood, it Definitely. can prevent depression, anxiety, and of course enhance your overall quality of life. The goal is actually to get back to your pre-cancer self, right? Although it's hard to get back exactly the way you were before, it's actually getting back to that independence. Yes. Those functional movements that you were used to doing, you can still get back to that. So it is important to consult with a healthcare professional to determine the appropriate level and type of exercise for your individual circumstances. True. Myth number two, physical activity can spread or worsen cancer. Oh my, oh my goodness, God. I have not heard of that. <laughs> but wow, for those who are thinking that way, 
Let me tell you, it will not. No, there is no evidence. There is no evidence that it will worsen, worsen the cancer or even help it spread more. Actually, it's on the contrary. It will actually help your treatments be absorbed better by your body. For example, with chemotherapy, when you do aerobic exercises, it improves circulation, right? And yeah. what does a good circulation do to your body? It helps your oxygenated blood to flow better. And it can even help create more new blood vessels yeah. to aid those medicines to go spread throughout your body to kill more cancer cells. So regular exercise has been associated with lowering the risk of developing certain types of cancer and can also minimize the risk of recurrence. Yes. I cannot stress that enough. Exercise can really prevent the risk of recurrence for you. So it is crucial to follow the guidance of your doctors before starting any kind of workout, of course. True. And to, you know, when you're gonna be integrating physical activity, when you are undergoing a cancer treatment, make sure you are, your doctors are well aware and you are talking to a proper healthcare provider or a cancer exercise specialist to design that program for you. Very well said. Um, safety is always important, yes. especially if you are on active treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, myth number three. <laughs> Ito favorite ko to. Rest and inactivity are necessary for optimal recovery from cancer and its treatment. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's kind of true. While rest is important during the cancer treatment, extended periods of inactivity, sedentary lifestyle can actually make it worse. You know, you're going to experience a lot of weakness, fatigue. You will feel all the kinds of side effects when you're not moving. You know, so the muscle weakness, loss of flexibility, reduced cardiovascular fitness, it will actually affect your body in a negative way if you stop moving. So it's really engaging in appropriate levels of physical activity. There's low intensity, there's moderate activity that you can do. I just say, as I said earlier, you can walk around the house, you can do deep breathing exercises. You know, for example, as a breast cancer uh, survivor, when I was operated on my breast, my doctor said, I did not operate on your legs. So you can still walk, right? <laughs> so I remember that very well. Right, that doesn't limit you from moving. So yeah, engaging in appropriate levels of physical activity and safe movements can help maintain your overall fitness and prevent the side effects that are associated with the surgery and treatments that you have been through. True, true. Even a simple walk yes. during the morning mm -hmm. around the house right. or you know, have someone with you while you walk. Yeah, yeah that um, would be fun. Five to ten minutes mm -hmm. versus zero yes. is still better. Any movement right? is better than none. True. Mm -hmm. It was fun, April. <laughs> that the moves are very familiar. As I said, I used to use them as a way for me not to move. But, you know, as I go through this journey, um, helping cancer warriors and survivors, I realize more and more that not only do cancer warriors need it, everyone, everyone. needs movement. Yes. No? Everyone needs movement. Let's talk about tailoring exercise recommendations. Uh, this might be very, very challenging. Um, how do you customize exercise programs based on the different treatment modalities a cancer patient may be undergoing? You know what, Sha, it's actually a very extensive process for me. Um, you have already yes. experienced how I do it. <laughs> and I take into account so many considerations. Of course, I would have to get your medical and surgical history. Apart from that, I have to also um, check you and assess you what you can do at this time of your life. What are your levels of movement, you know? And for me, it's really about knowing the type of cancer that you have, what stage you are in right now, the treatments that you have been through or you are currently going through, the side effects that you have already experienced or the risks that you will be experiencing because of the treatments and your level of fitness. Yeah, it, I'm a testament to that. My assessment with April, I think lasted for an hour or more because she really had to 
you know, ask me to move different ways, standing up sideways, checking my balance. Mm -hmm. um, and there's no way to parang beat the assessment by saying, ah, flexible ako because April would know if you are overcompensating mm -hmm. so you can just tell her or give her an impression that you can actually stretch when in fact you're already having a hard time. So speaking of personalization, how does movement fit into the whole advocacy of patient-centric approach in cancer treatment? You know, that's a good question, Cha. I think our advocacies are quite aligned. You know, delivering a patient-centric approach is actually all about addressing the individual needs and the preferences of each patient because we are all different. We've been through different things. There's no, you know, cookie cutter for, for a cancer patient to go. Um, movement in this context becomes a powerful tool for self-expression and empowerment. I've been through it myself. I felt very empowered realizing that I can control the exercises that I, I can do. And by tailoring an exercise programs for my fellow breast cancer warriors, we not only enhance physical well-being, but also the, we can empower them to actively participate in their own healing journeys. That's true. Your work as a cancer exercise specialist must have brought about inspiring success stories. Can you share some of those that showcase the positive impact of exercise in conjunction with whatever they have been through? Yeah, you know, I, I love feedbacks from people, from, from my clients especially, because you really know that you are helping them improve their quality of life. Um, one of my clients is Atita, who is also a breast cancer warrior, a survivor, um, but she is also stage four. So she's currently having a lot of limitations, a lot of um, uncomfortable movements or pain in some kind of areas of her arm in her lower back. And as we went through our, our classes and as the weeks go by, you, you really see from their, you know, from their aura how they are more receptive to the class versus their first day. Yeah. How they are more comfortable with you versus okay, the that first day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, diba? Like, parang medyo, it's like, it's like they're, um, they're, uh, they're not holding back anymore because they feel better. True. Because they feel more functional. They are more independent. And hearing them say, Uy, April, you know, I can already reach this high. And yep. wow, that's already big for me. Yeah, I, I started with uh, the program with April. Um, I'm on my fifth session. And even on my second, se after my second session with her, um, I usually cannot um, get my shower uh, stick on my back without the aid of my assistant but now I'm able to you know do it myself um, there's a lot about movement and range motion that has improved and really these were not big exercises mm -hmm. as a matter of fact uh, for those of you who are listening you're familiar with counts and reps mine is 10 counts one rep you know but it has really activated the muscles that have been stagnant for, for sleeping many, many muscles years. Sleeping, sleeping. okay april given your personal journey what advice would you offer to individuals undergoing similar treatment therapies who are considering incorporating exercise into their routine well i would say get started now yes. <laughs> of course start small start with what you can do right give yourself grace don't push yourself so much. What you can do now, let's say if it's just walking, that's good enough. You can start with walking for five or ten minutes if that's all you can do without, you know, getting fatigued. But, you know, just listen to your body. That's the most important. You have to communicate openly, of course, with your doctors, with your healthcare providers, because they know what is um, good for you when you can start exercising, especially if you are currently in treatment. You always need to seek approval first before you start any kind of exercise program. 
So even gentle movements at home can already make a significant difference. So it's about finding what works for you, yes. what you can do realistically every yeah. day, you yes. know, without no, no one, without anyone telling you or reminding you because yeah. it's something that you actually enjoy. It, it's actually very collaborative when you start working with April because we started with an every other day and I told her, I think, I needed two days to recover, mm -hmm. so we adjusted. Yeah. So, small steps. Yes. Small steps that you can do every day. April knows I get bored with routines, and that's why I never lasted any gym membership that I attend to. Like, even if they sell the idea of circuit training, just doing things over and over again makes me really, really bored, and that's a total turn off. April, how can movement be fun and something that people can truly enjoy? Mm -hmm. Well, you've already seen my workout place, right? It's full of colors. So I also get bored actually. Sometimes I either just find something cute to wear just to motivate me, or in my case also the colorful dumbbells that you've seen. Um, but then... Really colorful dumbbells. Really colorful dumbbells. You know, it gets you pumped up. Um, well, I would also advise that you can Try different types of exercises that, of, of course, are prescribed for you, that are safe for you. You can, you can, you know, encourage yourself to walk outside for a few minutes or maybe find an activity that you enjoy either for yourself or with a group of people, maybe a group class, you know, um, as long as you can get yourself to stay motivated and to have fun while doing that. Find that kind of workout. And then another one would be to find a buddy. Find an exercise partner or an accountability partner mm -hmm. who, who can also help you remind yourself that, hey, it's workout day. Hey, we got to walk today. You know, having a workout partner can make the experience more enjoyable. And it can also provide a lot of support and encouragement. It can be as simple as what, taking a walk together with yes. you and Sophia, right? Yes. That is so good. The evening after dinner yes. or dinner. It's so nice to have a partner to do exercise with. So either you play a sport together or attend fitness classes together. And, number, uh, and the third one would be to also have a mix-up of activities. True. Kasi, well, since you get bored a lot, you know, sometimes you know, if it's already one thing that you keep doing, all the time the yeah. monotony of workouts you know it's it gets really boring so just keep something exciting by finding another movement class yeah. or maybe trying something new and you also can turn your exercise into a game ah game game I, I know of gyms who, who, who do that yeah they have challenges yeah. or with your accountability group you can set a goal together you know even walking now i yes. already can uh like link up with a group and see how who made the most number of steps right right i avoid those groups. <laughs> <laughs> that's I kind wanna, of a good pressure though <laughs> i, I want to walk at my own pace and i you know i don't need another person my, my daughter reminds me what time is your session with april because i live for the gym at this time it's as if she's reminding me that <laughs> i need to do it and if she sees me sitting down quite long enough, mm -hmm. she'll say, I'm taking a walk at five, are you joining me? Or can we walk the dogs together? Mm, that's so a good idea. That's, um, and you and I both love music. Yes, right? so you always music need the music. It's always fun. It um, motivates you even more. It, the upbeat music mm -hmm. helps a lot. BTS right? music. Yeah, you can so, create a playlist. Yeah, <laughs> BTS. I did that. <laughs> Yeah, so, you can create a playlist and it just really helps boost your mood. Yeah. You know, while you're walking, while you're doing house chores. I do my music in my house chores. Yeah. April gives me daily exercise movements and sometimes I incorporate it with my chores. Like I'm waiting for the coffee to brew. Yeah. You know, my I can do my shoulder exercises yes. while waiting for that. Um, I really love the idea of incorporating movements in what we do at home mm -hmm. and not going to a gym for to exercise. That's but right. Again, we respect choices yes. of people. Um, April, it's been really an enjoyable journey the past couple of months with you and thank you for sharing your incredible journey with us. I know 
people can find you on social media at Move Beyond Cancer mm -hmm. and your own account. Your story continues to be very inspiring and your dedication to helping others. Um, April just joined me in last weekend's um, Better Days Open House. To our listeners, thank you for joining us here on the Life Tula podcast. Please subscribe and share our channel to those who may need it. Until next time, take care and embrace your own journey to wellness. Thank you, April. Thank you, Chuck.